Welcome back everyone, it's Wednesday and after a few weeks it's time to go back to the serial acquires. We have covered quite a few now, many of them have been in Sweden, some of them have been in the UK I guess and then there was for sure an Italian one I remember, that his name was Reply. Today it's actually time to go back to Sweden and it's the turn of Lagerkrantz. This is another serial acquire that we are interested in and to talk about the serial acquire we're actually going to follow the same structure that we have covered for the other serial acquires in the past so we're going to go and look at their annual report because we are interested in getting to know their goals sometimes we find these serial acquires that are very clear on their goals about the companies that they would like to buy and their growth goals over the next few years so this is what we are going to look for in the report and then we're going to switch to sometimes it's stratosphere sometimes it's thicker today it's going to be ticker and we're going to be looking at their financials and then guy is going to walk us through a simple valuation to kind of understand how much growth is baked into the price and as many of you know we have affiliate links for stratosphere and ticker in the description down below so if you're interested in purchasing one of the paid plan of course the affiliate link could give you a discount that could be useful so let's start so lager crans they are a diversified technology group so they are operating in many different sectors and they have about 70 businesses of course they continue to acquire their story dates back to 1906 when they were part of the bergman and beving group which in 2001 was split into three entities and they are one of them so they exist as a separate company since 2001 one and they are a typical serial acquirer in the sense that when they buy another company their point of view is just to help this company but they have a very decentralized structure another thing that they mention is that they have financial goals that are very clear so the first is the earnings growth so 15 percent per year we have seen this a few times this means doubling every five years and the second financial goal is the return on equity that has to be larger than 25%. This is, of course, related to the return on invested capital. So we have to look at the amount of debt that they have. But in general, if the amount of debt is not too high, this ensures that they return is larger than the cost of capital and so this ensures that their growth is actually value accretive and here we can see a breakdown of revenue by product type customer segment and geography and the most important thing to observe in my view is that they have a lot of proprietary products so this is important because this should give them an edge so some sort of competitive advantage or moat going forward and the geographic dispersion of the company so we can see that they are essentially skewed towards the nordics so it's within a third denmark 13 percent norway nine finland six so overall about two-thirds of the revenue comes from the nordics so this is important to know because from a global point of view, they are not so diversified. They are diversified across countries, but most of the revenue comes from the Nordics and the Nordics are a relatively small part of the world. So on ticker, we can write LAGRB, so class B shares, and these are available in the Stockholm Stock Exchange. And we can see that recently in the last few months actually the stock came down about 20 25 percent but that overall in the last 10 years for example they grew a lot so their kager in the last 10 years is about 25 percent so a lot of growth and this is price kager but actually they also pay a dividend clearly is much smaller than this huge growth that they have and we can go directly to the financials First of all, let's extend the time span to 2013 so that we have a 10 year visibility of their performance. And based on this, we can clearly see that they essentially grew every year in terms of revenue, with the exception of 2021 when the revenue went down 2%. Of course, uh, something to keep in mind is that these reports are in uh, Swedish Krona and the Swedish Krona has been weak in the past 10 years, but still this is a very considerable growth, even though it seems better than it is. So in dollars, it would be slightly below this, but overall it's pretty good. 
And before going into the cash flow statement, let's look at ratios because here we can see the return on capital that they had. So we know that they try to get a 25% return on equity and we can check here that they have been around this number since 2013 at least. But what we are most interested in is the return on total capital, so return on capital. And this has been between, let's say, 13 and with the exception of the last few months, let's say 20. So this is a relatively good return on capital, or actually good return on capital. And so since the payout ratio has been around 40% over this time interval, this means that the sustainable growth of the company is in the low double digit range. And so just to comment on this point, this is possible only because their multiples expanded in the last 10 years. Okay, now let's try to assess the growth that is baked into the price. So if we go to the cash flow statement, we can try to assess the certainty equivalent operating cash flow and the maintenance capex in the form of depreciation and amortization. So if we plot the cash flow operations and the total depreciation and amortization, we can see that this difference, which is a proxy for the maintenance free cash flow, is increasing. So in, in the last 10 years, it increased quite substantially. So we will try to use a number that is relatively conservative based on the numbers on, from the last few years. So for example, in 2021, the cash flow operation was about 780 and the depreciation and amortization were about 250. So the difference is about 500 and this is million kronor. So this was the maintenance free cash flow more or less or approximated maintenance free cash flow in 2021. Then we see that in 2022, this shrunk, but this was probably an anomaly. And we see that in 2023, actually, it expanded quite significantly, so almost to 700 million kroner. So probably I would consider as a relatively stable maintenance free cash flow something in between these two numbers, maybe something close to the 2021 number, so 600 million kroner. If we capitalize this at a 4% rate, and we capitalize at 4 and not 5%, because there seem to be always a gap between the government bonds in Sweden and the US government bonds, which is also probably why the krona is continuously weakening. And this 4% capitalization tells us that 600 millions should be multiplied by 25. So it's about 15 billion. So 15 billion kroner is our approximate estimate of the enterprise value of the company without growth. So if we go to overview and we look at the enterprise value right now, right now is 22 billions. And we see that there's no, basically there's no debt because market price and enterprise value are basically the same. So we can just assume that that is also our assessment for the fair value of equity without growth. And so we can understand or we can estimate approximately how much growth is baked into the price, which is approximately 50%. So 50% for this company seems very reasonable. And based on the multiple expansion, what we could conclude is that a few years ago, they were basically a bear gain, but right now are relatively less so, even though the growth that is baked in is not very, very high. Then, of course, buying the company is something that every one of you should design on their own. So you should assess whether or not the analysis is reasonable. But compared to other serial acquirers, it seems to be a relatively fairly valued stock right now. Great. Thanks, Guy. And compounders, let us know what you think, as usual, about this serial acquirer and other serial acquirers that we might also cover in the future. We hope you like this kind of content. If so, consider subscribing and liking the video, and we're going to see you on Friday. Bye-bye.